begin with, uh, uh, my apologies and uh, apologies for the Icelandic group. The uh, Iceland there had a nice uh, non-stop flight this morning, which was delayed by three hours and 40 wow. minutes. Which is good, um, uh, in the sense that they will have to pay us 400 pounds in, 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 in reparation, but uh, it's bad for this meeting, I'm sorry. So uh, uh, my task is to talk about current and future uh, applications of retinal oximetry. Uh, uh, you can see uh, members of the Icelandic group. Uh, uh, as most of you know, I do have a, a commercial uh, uh, interest uh, in this field. And let me uh, acknowledge that. Now, I think it's good for us to, to uh, step back and, and uh, uh, recall that our field is doing very well. This is out of Web of Science, just showing, uh, uh, showing uh, publications uh, uh, which are labeled retinal oximetry and then uh, citations. And this is pretty much an exponential growth. I mean, so the field is doing well. I mean, we are, uh, uh, in terms of science and research, uh, we are a, a growth industry. So that's good. Uh, now, but then ask uh, 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 ourselves, is this useful? Will, uh, will we, uh, uh, in the end, be able to, cre uh, to uh, uh, create something that is useful uh, in medicine or, or uh, uh, in science? And so let's try to define what we are. And if we look at the diagnostic retinal imaging, uh, it has to date uh, been defined to basically structural imaging. This is the fundus photo. This is the OCT, uh, etc. And then there is a functional uh, imaging, that's the visual field, the visual function uh, 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 in general, and the electrical function, the ERG, and, and, uh, uh, and uh, so forth. And both of these, of course, tend to reflect the consequences of disease. Now, what we are doing with retinal uh, oximetry is metabolic imaging. So we are, for the first time, imaging the metabolism of the retina and, indeed, the oxygen uh, metabolism. Now, this is new, and it is interesting because many of the diseases that we deal with, they are metabolic. Let's mention diabetes. They are ischemic. And indeed, the metabolism and, and ischemia is a part of the pathophysiology of the uh, uh, disease, of the disease process, which then results in some of the structural and functional uh, damages which we currently uh, uh, image with our diagnostic uh, uh, imaging in ophthalmology. So why do we want to do a me metabolic imaging? It is because of this fact. So diseases like diabetes and retinal vein occlusions and, ma and many others, they have a metabolic or hypoxic changes that precede the structural and functional uh, uh, alterations. And we understand this quite well in, in a very simple terms. You know, ischemia in, in the vein occlusion from uh, 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 the occlused vein or the capillary non-perfusion in diabetes leads to hypoxia. Hypoxia is the main uh, 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 stimulant for VEGF uh, formation. And for those of you who are not ophthalmologists or not in, in, in the eye field, the uh, VEGF is the growth factor which is uh, uh, responsible for most of the uh, 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 pathophysiology of uh, diabetic retinopathy, vein occlusions, most of these ischemic or neovascular diseases. So it's a very central uh, uh, molecule and, and indeed the, the, the central focus of treatment. So, so it is indeed very central in the pathophysiology uh, uh, leading to neovascularization and edema. Uh, on the other hand, we also have diseases which have metabolic consequences. And here we have the diseases that uh, uh, induce <coughs> atrophy of the retina, the most notable being glaucoma, retinitis pigmentosa, atrophic A and D. There are many atrophic diseases of the retina, and, and, and atrophy is a part of many retinal diseases. And we can look at those also <coughs> because uh, uh, oximetry is sensitive to changes in oxygen consumption, re reduction in oxygen uh, uh, consumption. So here we have dead cells, and, and, and dead cells don't use oxygen, so the oxygen uh, 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 consumption uh, goes down, and this is something that we can sense. So already 
we are seeing uh, uh, the application of, of this technique to major classes of eye diseases. There are almost none uh, 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 excluded in terms of retinal disease here. This is a long talk, so I think it would be good uh, uh, to, you know, if you have a question or comment, uh, raise your hand and make it interactive, not that I speak continuously for 45 minutes, but, uh, but we have a, a dialogue. Now, before I go further into the, the uh, 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 disease states, again, let me talk a little bit about stability and sensitivity. And it, uh, a technology that, that wants to identify biomarkers, it needs to have some degree of stability and some degree of sensitivity to be useful at all. And let's just very briefly uh, 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 look at that and follows actually nicely what Martin was, was uh, uh, talking about just before. So in a publication in 2012 by Oliver Paulson, uh, 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 we looked at a cohort of young, healthy, homogenous uh, 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 individuals. So they were just young, basically medical students. They're all pretty much uh, 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 similar, uh, a good, healthy uh, cohort. And now uh, uh, we, we measured the, the, the mean oxygen uh, saturation in the uh, arterioles and venules. And of course, this is a mean value of, of all the four or six major vessels, etc. So it's just there's some, some uh, 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 data analysis that, uh, that has gone in, into this. But look at these standard deviations. Look how extremely low they are. If uh, uh, for, for those of us who, who work in, uh, uh, in ophthalmology, we deal with intraocular pressure with a, a standard deviation which is 25% uh, uh, of the mean. And we think it's fine. Here's something which is 5% of what? 2% two, uh, 2 of the mean or 5% or of, of the mean. So the, the uh, 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 stability of retinal oxygen saturation in a healthy cohort is remarkably tight. It's much tighter than most of the other biomarkers that we use in medicine, uh, if, we, if we compare. Now, why is it this way? Well, we know, of course, that the central uh, nervous system, and the retina is the central uh, nervous system, it regulates chemical values extremely tightly. The calcium levels, the pH, the oxygen, the CO2, etc., in the brain are very, very stable. Oh, and, and of course, if they were not very stable, the, the, the CNS would not function well. So we have all these mechanisms, vascular uh, 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 and otherwise, to keep the oxygen levels very, very stable in the healthy uh, 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 situation. And this is very important if you want to be able to, to uh, 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 discern between healthy and sick, if the healthy are sort of tightly packed. And, and then we can identify who is outside of that. Then, of course, if we do a test retest, you see again these remarkably low uh, 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 standard deviations, this uh, 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 remarkable stability. Go back, and you will see that uh, uh, there is a downward slope. Okay. So, so uh, 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 with AIDS. Now, uh, uh, we thought in the beginning that this was a, a, a physiological downward slope. Uh, now we think maybe it may be image deterioration with age, but this is sort of an, an, an unsettled question. So, so I mentioned your optometry, most optometry techniques you are know, careful can be sensitive to contrast reductions in your image. So for example, the piece of battery in the local media, uh -huh. I would expect to have an effect. That's what we have found. That. Okay. Yep. This is probably yeah. due to that. And this is, uh, so, so this is, uh, 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 you know, go going from age 20 to age 70, you can see, especially in the base, that there is, there is a little bit of a sloping off, especially in men, more in men than in, than in, in, in women. And so, so this slight uh, uh, decrease, it could be uh, uh, physiological, but we think it's more likely because of uh, capillary formation and, and, and image quality in, in the, in the uh, uh, older, older uh, parts of the cohort. Why would you expect that to have in the arteries and in the way? Yeah. Why would there be a difference? A very good question, and I don't have the answer. <laughs> I mean, if you can see a, see a little bit of, of, of the same slope, but it, it's, it's not significant. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good question. So should, so, so should I go back? Maybe it is physiological? I don't know. 
Speak up a bit. Let's hear Martin and Rebecca on cataracts. Martin. Yes. Uh, I will talk about it tomorrow because uh, after the first one I was trying to make the operation of the removal of vitreous, there are clear tendency to increase the cataract and I have a cohort where the cataracts are indicated by the posterior pole operation by the vitrectomy and I will have a talk about it. So it's now could be said that it's clear that the cataract has substantial effect on a on uh, accuracy of the spectrum. Martin Hammer. Yeah. Have you ever looked in the cover of, of pseudopathic subjects? Well, <coughs> so we, you want to talk? Yeah. If, if you look at people who are going for <coughs> an operation, cataract operation, and some of them had, had the operation on the other line, and then you could compare uh, within the uh, same uh, individual. And it was clear that the uh, um, measured venous values dropped a lot uh, in the cataract patients, in the cataract eyes. And there was a le less of an effect on the arterials. We were also taking this data there and uh, modeled it with image quality, contrast, and focus. And basically, this slope was explained by the contrast issue. Mm -hmm. So I am pretty confident that this is, that this is a, an issue of the contrast, even if it's not uh, large in, in the arterials. And I agree with Andy that this could be. Yeah. We'd expect it to affect the pain. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, so let's, let's continue. The, uh, um, and we, you know, we, we made the point with the low uh, variability in the mean uh, 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 data. Of course, there's variability within the image, and that's uh, that's a, a different question. But uh, 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 just to keep in, in keep in in, in 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 context, sort of the overall quality of this technology, which is which is quite high. Now, uh, sensitivity, the technology, as, as as many of you have shown, is very. Uh, 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 Sensitive. One way to look at that is is is, is this graph, where uh, Olaf uh, Olaf Dorter uh, uh, had uh, patients breathe pure oxygen and then go to <coughs> room air at at this point and measuring every five <coughs> seconds seconds you can see how nicely the oximeter responds to the change in 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 uh, uh, another way to look at this uh, the <coughs> sensitivity is Swain's work on on light and dark how the uh, uh, technique responds nicely to the metabolic effect of light and dark. So it's sensitive and stable. So these are just sort of the basics. 
before we go back into the uh, to talk talk about the diseases. So let me now go to the ischemic diseases, the neovascular diseases, too, and we'll take two examples: diabetes and retinal vein occlusion. And uh, uh, if we look at the pathophysiology thereof, we have hypoxia in in in, in uh, uh, retinal vein occlusion, hypoxia from the occluded vessel. There is no blood flow. There is uh, 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 hypoxia. This leads to the um, the formation of hypoxia-inducible factor, which does many things. It induces uh, um, VEGF, which causes neovascularization and edema, and it also induces apoptosis or cell death. And, and uh, uh, clearly, hypoxia is, is very central in this path pathophysiology, uh, which is why it can be such an important biomarker for this particular disease. And here, of course, we can measure the, the uh, 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 hypoxia. This is work from, from uh, for, uh, well, this is from uh, Sveitendai, and then uh, Thorin Skeving has done uh, lots of work uh, in this and, and others. And if we just look at the hypoxia in the CRVO eyes and see how variable uh, this is, there are some who are basically uh, uh, normal, and then uh, others who are very uh, hypoxic. And, and uh, uh, so this. I, I think can be a measure of the of the severity of disease, and what we do uh, currently in ophthalmology is that we divide uh, CRVO uh, patients into into two groups: ischemic and non-ischemic, which is based on a very arbitrary and coarse evaluation of the fluorescein uh, angiogram. So it's a very poor uh, uh, diagnostic uh, division, if if you ask me. And the oximetry can give us a measurement of the severity, a measurement of the hypoxia, which then relates to the VEGF uh, uh, formation and the uh, uh, disease process itself. So I think this is one example of a potential, we, we don't have it yet, but of a uh, 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 potential biomarker use of oximetry. Here you have a, a picture of the, of, of, of the CRVO, seeing the, the severe uh, hypoxia, and, re and uh, remembering the uh, 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 connection, the close connection between VEGF and uh, hypoxia, and VEGF is basically the cause of the entire pathophysiology of uh, uh, retinal vein occlusions. The Sindri uh, <coughs> uh, Trestason and the uh, Copenhagen group uh, looked at this as well. They managed to, to or they noticed a correlation between the, the uh, 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 treatment effect and the oximetry. So as the, as the patients improved uh, clinically after treatment, so did the oximetry. So it suggests that uh, 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 there is a correlation there that we can use the oximetry to follow or measure the, the, the effect of treatment. All of this will be uh, borne out by the multicenter study, which is ongoing and, and, and many of you are taking part in. <coughs> so in retinal vein occlusions, we see the variable uh, uh, hypoxia. We see it change uh, uh, over time and with uh, treatment. And if we look at current and future clinical uh, uh, applications, I would hope I would suspect that in the future that we can use oximetry to measure the severity of disease and have a, have a, a, a precise analog measurement rather than the sort of uh, coarse uh, classification that we use today. That we may even be able to use oximetry as a surrogate for VEGF. We, a lot of our treatment is to uh, uh, diminish VEGF. We give a, 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 a VEGF antibodies into the eye. So can we in a sense, have a surrogate for, for the VEGF uh, production or, or, or concentration, and then adjust our treatment uh, 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 accordingly. And then finally, can, can uh, oximetry measure the treatment effect? For example, in laser vitrectomy, et cetera. And, and we'll have more on, on that later. So I can see future clinical application for retinal vein occlusion, most definitely. We need more. Uh, research to, to sort of bring that home and this is going on and hopefully the multicenter study will uh, uh, complete this year and will be more definitive in, 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 in these statements. 
Any questions or comments so far? Okay, so let's go to the series. Now, I looked at PubMed, there are 29 hits on retinal, ox retinal oximetry and diabetes. So there's quite a bit going on. There's a lot of research going on in this field. The, it's the same basic pathophysiology as in, uh, in, in retinal vein occlusions as we, as, as, as we showed before. Here the hypoxia is called by capillary non-perfusion, non by capillary occlusions rather than, than a, a, a large vein occlusions, but, but in both cases the consequence is hypoxia, the mechanism is the same, the outcome is neovascularization, edema, and of course atrophy. Same thing. point, I mean, uh, 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 regarding uh, Martyr's data, this is a paper published in 2009. So this is some of the earliest work on, on diabetic uh, retinopathy. Yes, the, the, vari the uh, variability is considerable, but uh, here with later work, more patients, uh, 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 technology advanced by a few years, you can see it's much smaller. So we're seeing the, the, the advancement. On the on predicting uh, proliferative uh, retinopathy, no single bio, biomarker will do that. Uh, uh, in, 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 in some some work that I have done in a diff, 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 in, in in that field, <coughs> that we're predicting, uh, 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 predicting this from six uh, different uh, uh, clinical clinical uh, risk factors: duration of diabetes, blood glucose, etc. So, so I think uh, uh, oximetry will add as one more risk factor in that calculation, but uh, nothing alone will, no one uh, risk factor will uh, 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 predict whether you get uh, uh, a proliferative ret retinopathy or, or not with, with any degree of uh, precision. You need to take the, all the available data, at least a lot of it. Okay, so let's, yeah, okay. Uh, you, you mentioned that the uh, actual analysis could be a way to go, just to reiterate that, that the uh, strength of oximetry mostly uh, repeatability within the yes, same, same uh, eye. So these standard deviations are of course also caused by the uh, uh, confounding factors that Martin mentioned, which are different between eyes and between individuals. So it might be easier to follow the same patient and measure him again and again. Is he developing uh, more retinopathy? This is saturation ch chasing. It's easier from a technical uh, point of view. So the, uh, uh, this lecture will last for about two and a half hours or so. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, mine will be completely I was the, the, the uh, PhD uh, opponent for, for uh, uh, Clefter just a few months, uh, months ago, uh, wo some wonderful work on, on picking up the, the uh, 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 metabolic effect of hyperglycemia in the diabetic retina, so I thought I would just sort of uh, uh, advertise that, it's a uh, uh, such, such nice work. But uh, let's go very briefly into the treatment of diabetic uh, retinopathy because we can use oximetry, uh, uh, I think, uh, or we'll be able to, to, to sense the effect of treatment. So first is the laser, and just to remind you, uh, 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 
This is, of course, something that we found a very long time ago. This is from 19, 1981 the, uh, in, the, in the monkey, that indeed uh, uh, laser treatment improves the oxygen <coughs> oxygenation of the retina in diabetes, and this is why it works. And, 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 and then uh, uh, in a recent paper by, uh, again, uh, Christina Jorgensen and Tokyo Beck, this was reiterated to some degree. Uh, uh, the, uh, this is uh, the abstract or parts of the abstract from their paper. They indeed saw uh, uh, increases in venous oxygen uh, saturation following uh, la laser treatment. I think there's more work <coughs> to be done here to sort of bring this home, but uh, I think this all fits into, uh, in a sense, what we know about this physiology from the uh, animal work and invasive work. Uh, uh, so we can see some changes with the laser treatment. Uh, this is uh, 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 to give you the literature on that. There's a lot, I, I, an enormous agreement on that physiology uh, uh, in general, and then also in the in the tractomy, sort of the other main treatment uh, uh, aspect of diabetic retinopathy. In 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 this vein, uh, we also see a change, an, an, an increase in the oxygen uh, saturation, and and Martin Sheen will talk about that a little bit. Later in this meeting, this also <laughs> fits very nicely with the old uh, physiological work, and we'll, I, I think we have a talk on that tomorrow, so I'll not go into that in any, any great uh, 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 detail. Just to uh, uh, remember <coughs> the work by, by Martin Sheen, and he'll talk about that uh, later on. Indeed, the treatment has an effect. And uh, 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 this also agrees with the invasive work in people by uh, uh, BP and, and uh, Holocamp showing that uh, when you remove the vitreous, the oxygen currents in the uh, 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 vitreous cavity they uh, 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 become greater and the move the oxygen about. We'll, we'll talk, talk about that later on, I think tomorrow. So to summarize on uh, diabetes, so what we know <coughs> is that the oxygen disturbance, the changes in diabetic retinopathy, they correlate with the, with the level of retinopathy. <coughs> uh, they uh, uh, fit from a physiological point of view with the capillary non-perfusion, the mild distribution of, of uh, blood flow. And we see an effect from laser treatment <coughs> and vitrectomy as invasive technologies have shown us before. So what are the future uh, clinical applications? I think we will be able to use oximetry to measure the severity of retinopathy, of diabetic retinopathy, to replace the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, structural classification that we use today, replace or complement. I think oximetry can measure the treatment effect of laser, of uh, vitrectomy, help us find out if we have done enough so that we can, for, for example, titrate the uh, laser treatment uh, 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 and, 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 and adjust the laser treatment to the immediate uh, measurement of, of the uh, uh, oximetry. Again, we're not here yet. We're talking about the future uh, uh, applications. But I'm trying to look ahead and see where we are going with uh, uh, this technology of ours. Comments or questions here? So then I go on. And yeah, this is sort of a, a, a summary of the, of, the uh, 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 of course, both for diabetes and for uh, uh, the, the vein occlusions. We have the hypoxia uh, uh, stimulating VEGF um, formation leading to edema and neovascularization, basically the disease state. And then we have the treatment of vitrectomy and laser and both influence the hypoxia. So, so we're basically dealing with this part of the patho uh, uh, physiology, which is closer to the sort of engine of the patho uh, physiology than anything else that we have available to look at. No, so now let's talk about atrophy. So we're going from the neovascular ischemic diseases to the atrophic diseases. My favorite uh, atrophic retinal disease is glaucoma. And, and others are, of course, re retinitis uh, 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 pigmentosa and atrophic AAMD. And, and here, of course, it's quite obvious that atrophy reduces oxygen consumption 
of uh, 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 the tissue and, and the uh, oximetry is sensitive to this reduction in oxygen consumption. And uh, this has been uh, looked at uh, quite uh, 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 in, 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 in detail in glaucoma, again, 27 PubMed hits on, on retinal, retinal uh, oximetry and glaucoma. So the field is getting a bit bulky in terms of, of, of papers. Thing about this is look how tightly these spots fall on the line. Look how linear this association seems to be. And the thing is, oximetry is objective, it's precise, uh, uh, it's instantaneous. A visual field, which is what, what we compare with in, in, in and, and uh, 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 okay. I know something about visual field. Yes, I thought uh, so. <laughs> now, a lot of lots of the audience may not be familiar with the mean defect. That's that's the overall description of the field of vision. And the mean defect of uh, zero is a perfectly normal visual field. There's somebody that we all have mean defects of about zero. A mean defect of minus 28 is a patient who's blind. Mm -hmm. kind of. Now, if you look at the venous saturations, the blue um, symbols, there are. Um, and again, this is, this is disappointing to me, but it's, th th this is interesting, the fact that the venous saturation goes up as the damage increases is some, undoubtedly interesting. However, these patients have got normal vision. Uh, and um, the venous saturation in this patient normal vision is the same as the venous saturation in this patient is blind. So this, this, the magnitude of this change, whilst interesting, is modest. The magnitude along the bottom here is massive. The difference between this, a normal normal vision, and this, blindness is massive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th this is what we have discussed. It's, it's, it's interesting, uh, but it's, it's, it, it's, a, it's a relatively small change, that's all, across a very large yeah. range of disease. You, you may not forget that this is what we discussed previously, yeah. that patients that have only very small defects may have already 50% or 40% of the Gambian cells who are already blind. Sure, sure. So when we see them at the beginning, they have almost 40% damage already. Sure, sure. So we don't know when, when the coma really starts. This is no, the that's, that's undoubtedly true. It's just a clinical utility, that's all. And so if you, yeah. want, if you want to stage glaucoma, are you going to choose the, the measurement at the bottom there that's gone from 0 to minus 28, or are you going to use the measurement in the blue symbols, which is changed in a very small yeah, way? This, this, is, well, this is very true what you're saying. But, but which would you prefer? Zero. I mean, we don't know what, what the left side of the curve would be if we really could test the patient with early glaucoma in terms of early ganglion cell loss. So then we would maybe then figure the point. I, I don't know. Yeah, this is one thing. Let's just make one point. The, uh, uh, the difference here, which we'll take from here to here, is something like 10, you know, 10 uh, 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 percentage points. The, and and, and as, as a matter of fact, the, the blood flow go, go, goes down at the same time. This is not measured here. We're talking about a reduction in oxygen co oxygen contribution to the retina of a third or half or something like that. But re re really, a huge amount. The uh, 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 it's sort of uh, you know you, one could show the scale in different in different in different different ways. The uh, 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 the limitation with with uh, uh, the mean defect with the uh, visual field, which is down here, is that it's subjective. It's, it's extremely variable, even from time to time. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it takes training for the patient to do it, etc. So it has limitations. Now, oximetry has limitations also. The, uh, uh, and again, we're looking into the future. We can see this uh, is a technology which has the, the it's, it's objective and it's sort of analog. The, uh, uh, those are the advantages. Will they outweigh the others? Well, we don't know yet, but uh, it's a potential. Paul is next to them, Gerard. Yeah, I, I just to follow and and on this point is that um, <coughs> you have an enormous loss of ganglion cells in, in this, and yet uh, the difference isn't great. What does it tell you? That the contribution of ganglion cells to the overall consumption of oxygen that you're measuring with this technique isn't that great, really. So, you know, less than. <coughs> there are other cells who are doing the job. So you wouldn't expect maybe to get a bigger change than that. 
No, I think it's, I, I, the only point I'm trying to make is scientifically it's really interesting. And, and, and right. it, well, it still intrigues me and interests me enormously. I was just, I was just trying to put the context in it. That's all. Right. Yeah. I, I some parts, some parts of this may not, may not fully understand yeah. Yeah. what the difference between a normal, complete normal vision field and blindness right. uh, along the, along the x-axis. That's all. Well, I mean, the fifty percent loss is about what minus eight or. Loss of the ganglion cell actions. Oh uh, well, that, that's difficult to quantify with that sort right. of decision actually. Yeah. Somewhere around that probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, again, and you're not that. getting a lot of change. Could you? Could you? Could you? Well, quite apart from the fact that counting axons, you, you don't know whether the axons that you counted are functioning. That's or not functioning. Right. Right. And, and, and um, actually, with respect, to the, the only way to find out whether they are functioning is with some sort of functional imaging, right. like symmetry, for example. So, so it's simplistic just to count things. I agree. Yeah. Well, one additional point. I mean, Venus saturation gives you only a very small uh, point of the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Because as I showed you today in, in the morning, I mean, it will be very dependent on, on overall blood flow, on hemoglobin, and on the other yeah. parameters. Yeah. <coughs> what you would really like to know is the oxygen extraction. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. and also um, Martin's nice uh, presentation because there you're, you're basically setting the retina task. You're, you're, you're uh, stressing the retina. And so you're seeing how um, responsive and uh, healthy if, the retina if, is. If, if you would really have, nice for actually. example, extraction, uh, uh, Oxygen extraction, maybe we would have a stronger correlation. I don't know, but the, 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 because you know, only Venus, the Venus part gives you only a small. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an indirect measurement of uh, something. You'd like to measure a whole lot more about the process than just what comes out the back, what comes out the Venus, what hasn't been used. But yeah. the only point I was making was that the, uh, the scale of the change in the Venus saturation across the full range of the glaucoma natural history. From, not, from hardly glaucoma at all to blind from glaucoma. That, that change is small in magnitude. But uh, let me summarize, you know, I think we can agree <coughs> that, that the, the technology has this potential in principle. The, uh, the question, and, and I think, I think that's, a, that's a very valid question, is whether the stability and sensitivity of the technology is adequate to, 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 to realize that. Yeah. That potential, and I think that's, that's an open question. Another point, maybe there is more variability in uh, blood oxygenation in Venus, blood oxygenation in our heart. It's not exactly the technology that the problem because uh, we find the same variability, for example, in optic nerve area. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, if we try to understand what is the normal blood oxygenation distribution to differentiate uh, glaucoma from normal very difficult because the statistics demonstrate a very large distribution of normal. What is the mean of normal <coughs> genetic of the Earth? It's very large. Exactly. Yes. So and also, I mean, if, if what you're interested in measuring is, is ganglion cell function, surely you use an ERG, would be a lot more. Well, ERG would be ERG used is uh, uh, fraught with, with noise, measurement of noise, unfortunately. Uh, and the, the ganglion cells don't contribute to the class ERG mm -hmm. at all. You, you have a pattern ERG, which yeah. you theoretically could use for this. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's it, 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 outside the scope of this. No, 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 but if you're comparing it to a technique that might be clinically useful, there is right. anti-fibre BP, I would say. Well, as, a, as an electrophysiologist, I can tell you that uh, there is no really good method to measure glaucoma change, the changes in glaucoma in the electrical mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, actually, uh, it's, not, it's not really my problem. Well, certainly it's yours, but, but, but by the way, uh, the, again, there's a large overlap between uh, disease and the normal uh, group. So yes. it, it's difficult to separate them neatly into two uh, distributions. Right? I think to, to resolve this question, what we need is a longitudinal study of a few hundred glaucoma patients followed over three years, five years, where indeed the, the, you know, the, the, these different uh, uh, diagnostic parameters, the visual field, the OCT uh, analysis of the, or the other structural analysis of the, of the retina and the optic nerve, and oximetry can be done, and we can basically find out which is the best, how do they combine in, 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 in uh, helping us identify uh, uh, 
what's what's uh, uh, going on. And, and, and one strength of uh, oximetry, just, just to finish with that, is again the temporal ability. That is, it is, I think, better in, in following a patient from time to time to see a, a, an individual change than it is in a cross-sectional. So I think, uh, I would say, uh, 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 Andrew, there still is hope. No, it's, it's fascinating. It's just, it's not, uh, it's just worth saying, that's all, yeah? Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. That's not very well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is mo more, this more is of the uh, glaucoma. We'll, we'll, we'll continue. The, so so my, my point for uh, 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 the use of oximetry in glaucoma is that yes, it correlates with the visual field, and yes, it correlates with the structural uh, 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 changes, which is what we use today for uh, uh, diagnosis. It is a robust uh, method. It has high sensitivity and low um, variability. We talked about that. There is a physiological rationale in that cells die, they stop using oxygen, and we can measure that. That's, that's a pretty simple rationale. And then we go to some of the other atrophic diseases briefly. The, uh, 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 so uh, let me uh, uh, bring up the paper by, uh, by the Japanese group on, on uh, uh, RP and uh, uh, clearly the same principle, it's the atrophy, now the photoreceptors, of course the photoreceptors are easier to measure because they use an awful lot of oxygen and, and uh, them dying uh, uh, is, 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 is a big change in, in, in oxygen uh, consumption compared to the, to the ganglion cells. And, and, and just to, to uh, 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 repeat the, the, uh, their uh, uh, conclusion, the severity of RP was correlated with the increased oxygen saturation of the retinal venules and decreased retinal vessel uh, caliber. So indeed, they saw this uh, 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 correlation. The same did the group in, in Basel, uh, uh, pretty much exactly the same uh, uh, conclusion and the same Thor Eisenson has done uh, 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 in, in in, in uh, our group, so there's a very good uh, uh, consensus again. I mean, it seems like in, in uh, oximetry we always have consensus. And uh, uh, so in RP, I would say, well, it correlates with the uh, structural uh, damage. It correlates with the ERG or the electrophysiological uh, 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 evaluation. So it may indeed be an, uh, a, uh, an, uh, a method, maybe even, and I would think, a better method to uh, measure the degree of atrophy and then follow atrophy in RP, in glaucoma, in atrophic uh, uh, AMD, and so forth. So this is yet another future clinical application and research uh, application of this uh, technology. I, I can think of one other use, which uh, I don't know if it's been done yet, but could be a really, use, a really useful application is uh, in, in um, RP treatments uh, in uh, gene therapy and uh, exactly. RPE transplants and such like. It's very, uh, speak, speaking for the psychophysics side of things, it's, it's actually quite difficult to measure psychophysical changes after, um, especially when the changes are small. Right? And then you want to know whether there's any benefit at all from the treatment. And uh, if you can show increased uh, oxygen uh, utilization in an area that you put a, you put a, a vector into, then that, that's, that would be compelling evidence that I don't think anybody's done that. Yeah, it's, it's a very good point because in all of these atrophic diseases, be that in the in the retinal dystrophies like uh, uh, retinitis pigmentosa and so forth, there is a gene therapy and the and, 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 and etc. Then in in atrophic AMD and geographic geographic atrophy, there, there are many uh, trials where people are trying to improve these diseases, and it is very difficult to measure atrophy. And that's uh, 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 you're gonna th th throw me out now. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I mean, I'm, 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 not gonna, I'm actually almost done. Uh, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just very, very quickly, the brain. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, as you know, the brain is a part of the retina. <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> the, the, uh, 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 so the same diseases influence both. And we know this from OCT studies, that if you have uh, multiple sclerosis, you can see changes in the retina. If you have Parkinson's disease, you can see changes in the retina. <coughs> if you have Alzheimer's, you can see changes in the retina, etc. And so 
uh, 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 this is something that we can definitely look at because through the eye we can indeed look at the central nervous system and and uh, 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 and uh, 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 look at the brain. And there's only one paper yet, so this is the first uh, 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 paper on using oximetry for brain disease. So this is Alzheimer's and and uh, 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 the uh, a small study done uh, uh, in Reykjavik comparing people with uh, a certain uh, uh, level of Alzheimer's disease and then a healthy uh, uh, cohort and, in, and indeed there is statistically significant difference in the oxygen uh, metabolism between the two groups. So I think this is sort of opening a window that we should now start looking at more of these brain diseases and looking at them in more detail. This is just say, hey, there's something there. I mean, it's a small, small paper. The, uh, 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 but I think uh, a very important paper because uh, 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 this is a whole new field. Can we use the eye to diagnose brain disease? It's already being done with the OCTs and we can add uh, uh, oximetry to that and look at the, uh, the uh, 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 metabolism of the of the central nervous system. So finally, systemic disease, and, and we have uh, uh, papers in heart disease. This is Sindri uh, Tristasson and the Copenhagen group, uh, 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 Palkovitz and the uh, group in Vienna with CO COPD, and, and uh, Thorin uh, Eliasdottir in, in our group has been uh, working on that as well, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. So indeed, we can, you know, the, the, just, just to give you the, the, the very quickly, the nice thing about the retinal blood vessels is that they are central blood vessels. And if we run into trouble, if we're run over by a bus or, 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 or shot up in the, in, the, in, in the field of combat, we go into shock, what do we do? We uh, uh, try to preserve our central organs, our heart, our brain, etc. So all the blood flow goes to the heart, the brain, the eye, nothing goes into the fingers or, or etc. So the finger oximeter uh, uh, is very is quite useless in these severely uh, 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 critically injured or diseased people, whereas looking in the eye, you have central circulation, you have central nervous system uh, circulation, so you can find what is the real health of that person. So that's another huge potential use for this uh, uh, technology, which we're just starting to, to touch on, and my final slide, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman. <laughs> So this simply summarizes. So I think there are huge future applications possible for oximetry. I think we're just starting. We're seeing the field growing exponentially, as we saw on the, on the, on the bibliographic uh, 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 data I showed you in the very beginning. But we're just starting. So I think that, we, that this technology will be used in five or 10 years to measure the severity of several retinal diseases, some of the major ret retinal uh, diseases that we uh, deal with, both to measure the diseases and to monitor the uh, uh, response to treatment and thereby control the treatment. I think it could also be used and will also be used to monitor uh, ongoing uh, atrophy uh, uh, and give, give us an objective way of, of uh, 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 monitoring progressive uh, atrophy, be that in glaucoma, retinitis pigmentosa, atrophic AMD, and then the potential in the brain and the potential for systemic use in, in, in critical care uh, 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 medicine uh, is, is there for the taking. So the, the, I think the future is bright. Thank you. <coughs> Yes, we're a little bit late, but uh, 